Hey there, fellow classic comic collectors. As always, I'm Scott Harris King, and today I'm back in, with the first in a new series of store visits. So, for the holidays, just after Christmas, my wife and I decided to go on a week's vacation and have some Christmas spirit, visit some magical New England Christmas towns. And along the way, of course, we also visited a bunch of comic book stores, because whenever we go traveling, I like to go to as many comic stores as we can. And in this case, we went to not one, not two, not three, but seven. Yes, we went to seven comic book stores in this trip. In fact, we actually went to eight comic stores. One of them was closed, but that one, even that one, I have a <laughs> quite a story about. That's going to be in a future video. Today, we're going to start off with the beginning of our trip, and that is visiting the Time Capsule in Seekonk, Massachusetts. Now, I forgot to get video of the outside of the store, which is probably just as well, because by the time we got there, it was already dark. So there's nothing to show except darkness. But I did get some video of the inside of the store, which you are now looking at. And um, this place has a lot of cool stuff. It's got a lot of cool back issues. I found some neat books. Um, my wife also bought a lot of stuff. Um, now, my wife doesn't collect... She doesn't really collect comics, and she doesn't collect or really read single issues, but she does like to read comics. She likes to read trades. She prefers to read collections where she can get the whole story. Uh, and so what happens in a lot of the stores we go to is I'll buy a few back issues because uh, I'm both cheap and also I'm looking for, as you know, some things that are very specific and not that easy to find. So a lot of stores, I only get a couple back issues and then my wife comes over with a giant pile of trade paperback. So it's a little bit funny that um, my wife ends up at a lot of these stores spending quite a bit more money than I do. Um, but uh, the upshot is that I'm going to be showing you the back issues I got. And I'm also going to be showing you the trades that my wife got. And I'll be doing that for some of the other stores we went to on this trip as well. A little bit about the store. Um, as you saw in the video, there's, there's quite a lot of back issues, um, and, uh, they did have a, a good selection of stuff going back to the Bronze Age. They had some Silver Age stuff as well. They had probably, the Silver Age stuff was sort of broken out separately from the rest of the books. Uh, and there's a few, a handful of like Golden and Adam Age books in there as well. But there was maybe, I don't know, four long boxes of Silver Age stuff, um, that were sort of separate from the rest um, and, um, I didn't end up buying a whole lot, but there was, there was a lot of cool stuff. There was also quite a bit of, uh, um, gaming stuff, uh, both video games and, um, tabletop games, collectible card games, that sort of thing. Um, so all in all, a really cool store. Um, the host, uh, the, uh, the guy running the store, I didn't catch his name, but he's very friendly. Um, was giving my wife a lot of advice on what books, you know, uh, she should get, um, which some of which I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Um, so all in all, really cool store. I will say the only thing I will say, and this is not necessarily a negative for everybody, but for some of you, uh, there was a very strong smell of marijuana in the store. Uh, as soon as you walked in, it was like, marijuana uh and to the by the time we left my eyes were actually burning from the weed so uh if you don't like that um or you're allergic to marijuana something to know because marijuana of course is legal here in massachusetts um and uh there's quite a few places we go these days where you're just walking down the street and there's people out there smoking weed you get the face full of weed but in this case the whole store smells like weed so yeah, and just wanted to flag that for, for those of you who care. But here's what I got. Um, you'll recognize this one right up front because I buy this every time I can. It is uh, one of my favorite comics. It's Just Married, number 104, with the interracial couple Kiss by Joe Statton. Um, this was $5. It's a lower grade copy, uh, but aren't they all? Um the first copy of this book that I got, uh, which was from my comic shop um, a couple years ago when I was still buying from them, um, they had it graded officially at like a six. But, you know, they're very, very 
uh, strict. They undergrade a lot on their mid-grade books in particular. Um, I think my copy is more like a 7.5. Um, and the all, all the other copies I've bought since then, none of them have been close to that. But I continue to buy them all. Um, this one does have a good strike. Um, the uh, the strike on the figures is good. Um, the this book the uh, something shifted while they were printing it, and they get can get very out of focus. So I have copies that are a whole range of how in focus they are. This one's good. Um, but it's not the only Charlton romance that I got. Um, cause I also got this. It's I love you. Number one thirteen. some really deep colors. Um, it's, it's a solid book. It, you know, it's got a couple of corner creases and some wear on the edges, but for a Charlton, um, it's in nice shape. And a lot of the Charlton romance that he had were in nice shape. Um, and you can see just the vibrant colors on this one. And then here's a great uh, cover. And that's in quite nice condition. It's uh, Teen Confessions number 91. I may have a copy of this already. But it's a great, um, just a really great cover. Not sure who the artist is, but it's really top notch. Um, and this is in quite nice condition. It does have a classic Charlton printing defect, which it has uh, just a line of black ink running across the middle for no reason. Now you notice this is priced $14. Actually, he gave me a super deal on on these. So um, the total cost um, of the, the price on these three was 27, but he actually only charged me 10 for all three of them. So um, just something to keep in mind. He had quite a few other Charlton Romance books, um, but these were the ones that I wanted the most. And then the other book that I bought, another book that you've seen on here before, because it's one I keep my eye out for. Um, I already have a copy that's slightly nicer than this that I'll be keeping for myself, but this is one that I'll be flipping. Um, it's All American Men of War number 90. And it is a nice copy. It's flat. It's clean. Um, it's, it's actually quite nice. It does have a spine, um, a little piece out of the spine, um, and some, some wear at the bottom edge of the corners are rounded. So, um, it's a mid grade book. I think the piece out of the spine is the, is the biggest defect. So it's probably, I don't know. I, I would, I would have a hard time going above a five because of the tick out of the spine, but it's quite nice. It was $20. Um, this is the source of multiple Roy Lichtenstein paintings. Uh, and so while it's not as desirable as 89, the issue before this, which has the source of uh, five Lichtenstein works, um, this one is still quite desirable. Uh, so I always keep my eye out. If they happen to have all American men of war, I'm always looking for 89 and 90 and um, they had a 90. So um, that's great. I'll be probably reselling that at eBay. Um, and so here's the uh, quite a large pile of comics, uh, graphic novels that my wife purchased. Um, and I'll show them off and then I'm going to talk a little bit about them. So here's book one of Blackbird. This is from Image, Sam Humphreys and Jen Bartell. Um, she also got book one of Compass, also from Image. Um, So, Blackbird is sort of like an urban fantasy thing. Um, there's like secret wizard societies that live among us and they have like some sort of, um, uh, you know, weird wizard politics and stuff like that. And the lead character discovers that she's actually a wizard um, and there's a lot of family drama in it. Um, Compass is a historical adventure in the vein of like a uh, Indiana Jones or a Tomb Raider, and it's it's about a um, a female Muslim scholar in the 13th century um, who is going around researching and trying to find fabled artifacts, and uh, at the same time the um, there's uh, representatives from the um, Mongol Empire. The Mongol horde who are sweeping across uh, 
Asia and Europe who are also trying to find them. So it's a little bit, like I said, it's kind of like Indiana Jones trying to find the artifacts instead of ahead of the uh, Nazis, but it's set in the 13th century and it has the interesting spin with the Muslim uh, heroine. Um, so um, both of these I've read. Um, I thought this was pretty good. Um, this one I didn't really care for. Um, it felt there were parts of it that I liked, but it felt very much like there's certain things with the writing and the art style that felt very much of this moment in terms of I've seen a lot of it. Um, and I don't even read that much new stuff, but the art style, just some aspects of the writing, it just felt, I don't know, it felt, uh, there's things that are interesting, but not, not enough. Um, here's one I did not read, but it's Bitterroot, which won um, an Eisner in 2020. Um, and a Ringo, um, also from Image, it's Bitterroot, uh, once the Sangares were known as the greatest monster hunter hunting family of all time, they're specially curing the souls of those infected by hate, um, and, uh, they're, they're patrolling the streets of Harlem to stop a supernatural or demonic uh thing that's infecting people with hate sounds really interesting um but uh and and obviously it's acclaimed i just i haven't gotten around to reading it yet um sort of ages is from uh gabriel rodriguez now this is idw um and this is the artist from lock and key this is like a sci-fi fantasy mashup retelling of the Arthurian legend that takes place on like a um there's there's a there's a lot of sci-fi elements kind of like dune almost mixed a little bit with the Arthurian legends and this is this uh female heroine who um takes up the this version of Excalibur she's called Avalon and um the storytelling was um very modern uh, there's a lot of um, a lot of character thread, different plot threads, and different groups of characters, and it cuts in between them um, rapidly and with very little warning. And you so you have to do a little bit of mental work yourself to piece things together, and eventually it all comes together. Um, but it wasn't quite what I was expecting um, from what seems like it's going to be a like a coming of age, like a classic coming of age hero's journey um it's uh more challenging and and less straightforward and uh didn't really grab me like I, I just didn't really care about any of the characters um finally i haven't read this yet uh it's called echo lands and it's a jh williams now a few things that are interesting about this the first one that caught my eye immediately besides jh williams who's amazing is the um format because as you can see it's not a regular comic book shape now jh williams was famous uh in all of his works for these amazing two-page spreads and so this basically allows him to do the equivalent of two-page spreads on every page because uh of the design you know um and so the comic reads like that and um it seemed uh, seems really interesting, but very challenging. Again, um, there's a lot of stuff in it. I could tell just by flipping through it. That's referential to different, um, artists, uh, from the past, like Kirby. It's very obvious which characters are Kirby influenced and it's using different like comic styles. And, um, when we were on vacation, it just wasn't the sort of book that I felt like relaxing with. So at some point, I'm going to read that um, when I feel like more intellectually up to it um, instead of being tired at the end of the year. So, uh, but anyway, so my wife, as you can see, got a lot of cool stuff. Um, I got some cool stuff. Uh, happy to have yet another copy of this. And um, um, I'll be moving this on again to a, to a home, um, a good home. One thing I wanted to mention, it does have a date stamp on it. So that it is tempting actually to keep this for myself and sell the copy that I already had. 
so I may look at that because I do love date stamps and I'd rather have a copy with a date stamp than without. So I may end up keeping this one and selling the other one that I have. But that's it for this time. Again, that was Time Capsule Seekonk Mass. If you're in the area, check it out. It's right outside of Providence, Rhode Island. So um, next time around, we'll be going to another store um, uh, on this trip uh, down in Rhode Island. Um, so uh, stay tuned and let me know what you think down below. I'll see you next time.